she flaked out. Ruth Bowman at the airport with her, telling her, you better get your motherfucking ass on this damn plane. I'm sick of your shit, Riri. I'm sick of your shit. Riri said to Ruth, you're being insensitive. I don't want to get on the plane. If you have not already done so, please remember to like, share to Facebook, and subscribe because it is so important to our success here on the YouTube. And if you are not already a part of our book club, please remember to hit the Patreon link below or the join button here on YouTube and be privy to all the shenanigans before YouTube gets it, if the YouTube gets it. Now, let's talk about David Ritz, Aretha Franklin's Respect, part 23. So where we left off, Aretha Franklin is a single woman, okay? She is hot, single, and ready to mingle. But she done told that Jet Magazine that she got her old boyfriend, okay? His name is Mr. Mystique. Okay, she been cheating on him. I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. She was using him to cheat on all her boyfriends, all her husbands, all the dudes who she called or that who she openly had a relationship with. Okay, her family said that's a motherfucking lie. Riri has a uh, extended uh, imagination. Okay, people knew that Riri had a propensity to tell fairy tales okay now none of them want to call her a liar right but that's what i'm getting they just putting some judge on the fact that riri be lying okay they said in actuality that um riri was addicted to the young and the restless so she liked to live her life as one of them characters on the young and restless all right okay riri okay but she's gonna say she a lie Ain't nobody heard of no. I've been with this lady her whole life. I'm her manager. I'm traveling around the world with her. Why I ain't never seen Mr. Mystique climbing in and out of the goddamn window? She lying. She ain't quite single, ready to mingle yet. I mean, she's separated from Glenn Determined. But as of February 1984, the divorce between Aretha Franklin and Glenn Determined was fine. Now, Colin says, you also can't imagine the terrible stress of being in the same house with Daddy. I wish Aretha hadn't moved back in, but that was her choice. She had to follow her conscience. Me and Ree in the same bedroom, our childhood bedroom, with, was no picnic. They in the okay. room, Carlin and Riri sharing their childhood room. Aretha's saying, you snore too motherfucking much. Carlin saying, it ain't me snoring, it's you snoring. Riri thought she was slick and taped her sister snoring. When both of them woke up and listened to the tape, it wasn't Carlin snoring. It was Riri ass snoring. Now, that winter, okay, in, what is this, 1984, Jackie Wilson, the great Detroit soul singer, died at the age of 49. It happened during that same time that Dad was still in a deep coma, says Cecil. Our father was close to Jackie Wilson. In fact, we all were. We were shocked when he had his heart attack. I was told that it happened when he was singing that line in Lonely Teardrops that says, My heart is crying. After that, like Dad, he fell into a deep coma. Even further, he died broke, which scarred Aretha, or which scared Aretha. Okay? Yeah. Okay, now, the financial challenges mounted when in 1984, Aretha was sued $102,000 in back taxes by the state of New York. The state claimed that she had not paid taxes in the recording work she had done in Manhattan from 1973 to 1977. Okay, now, you know, Riri, she in a delusional world, right? She said, what the fuck I got to pay? That's dead shit. That's Earth's the shit. Yeah, I sung it, but that's dead. They making all the money from it, not me. But okay. it didn't matter. Aretha still got charged. You know, the tax man don't care nothing about who did what. All they know is they put that 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 thing on you, nigga. You got to go. 
Okay, I don't care. Whenever the feds are involved, listen to me. Listen to me. I'm about to tell you some good shit. If the feds is investigating you, understand this. The fed ain't just wake up and investigate you, brother. They've been investigating your ass since your father went to jail. You hear me? They've been investigating your ass since you was seven. Okay? The feds don't play. All right? They make sure that they got enough information to hem your ass up. And that's what they did to Riri. They hemmed her ass up. Then on April Fool's Day in 1984... The day before his 45th birthday, Marvin Gaye was shot and killed by his father in Los Angeles. Cecil said after Smokey the Robinson, Marvin Gaye was his man. Mm -hmm. You should have stuck. You should have stuck with uh, Smokey the Robinson. Okay, now we'll expound on that later. So in May 1984, while Michael Jackson was being honored by Ronald Reagan at the White House, Aretha was in Detroit signing contracts. Okay, now remember, Aretha had always wanted to be a glamorous actress, you know, because the young lady, Barbara Streisand, who she started Columbia with, was on fire. Okay, everybody loved her, you know, and I think she felt a little, dis not a little disdain, she had disdain towards all females, period, 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 period. Hey, Aretha Franklin is back in Detroit signing a contract to do a musical, okay? She was to portray Mahalia Jackson. She felt like, okay, they don't want me in the movie world, but I'm going to show them motherfuckers on Broadway, okay? The show was to start in Detroit, move to Cleveland, um, Chicago, and then it was to hit Broadway. Now, before okay. she even had a chance to even start the role as Mahalia Jackson on Broadway, her father's five-year coma ended. Okay, C.L. Franklin died on January 27th, 1984. I knew it was coming, said Cecil. So did Irma and so did Carolyn. But I really believed that Aretha had convinced herself that ultimately daddy would come out of his coma and be fully restored. Now know this, she got money problems, right? Okay, now she just lost her daddy. Okay, understandable. But girl, you got too many lawsuits in the bag right now for you to mess around with this Mahalia Jackson gig. Okay, she flaked out on that Mahalia Jackson gig. And you know there was trouble coming. Now on the day of their father's funeral, Cecil's wife, Erlene, recollects the events. Okay, now everybody's seated in the church, at their father's church, and the family, meaning the siblings, is waiting outside the door. Erlene is standing next to her husband, Cecil. Because, you know, she is, after all, a part of the family. But Aretha, I told y'all, she don't know how to deal with pain. She just becomes super petty, all right, and start yelling at people for no fucking reason, right? So what she did was start kirking on Erlene. Erlene, you ain't a part of this goddamn family. What the fuck you in line for? I don't know you, girl. You just trying to get close to this family. You ain't that close, girl. You know. It took Jesse Jackson to come back. Jesse Jackson had to break up a fight between uh, the family in order for them to walk down the goddamn aisle. And the thing about it was, was Aretha was just did was just mad because she thought that Erlene wanted to walk into the church first before the siblings. And Erlene was like, I wasn't trying to do that. I was walking with my husband. It was silly, said Irma, but it was also appropriate. Daddy was always there to break up the family fights, okay? But Irma said that now that daddy is gone, who is here to break up the fights now? Jesse the Jackson. That's who breaks up the fight, Jesse the Jackson. A few weeks later after the funeral, Aretha got in contact with Ruth Bowman to set up an interview. She wanted to explain that now with her father gone, she was prepared to return to her career. I wasn't quite sure what she meant. For the past few weeks since daddy got sick, I've had to put my career on hold. I've had to sacrifice many things. I agreed that she had in fact sacrificed a great deal, at the at, but at the same time, I pointed out that after his coma, she had hardly retired or put her career on hold. She's done the Blues Brothers movie. She's jumped from Atlantic to Arista, where she cut four albums and was about to cut a fifth. Rather than slow down, she had sped up. With the help of Clive and Luther and many others, she had revived her career. The story was just the opposite of the one she was trying to tell. With that being said, according to the Ruth Bowman, Riri just wanted to show that she was the uh, suffering daughter. That's what she wanted to show. And that she put her life on hold to care for her father. Okay? When Ruth Bowman said, you know that's not true. 
you, these are the facts right here, Riri. Aretha Franklin said, well, I can't say that because it's just disrespectful to say. But it's a lie, Ri. It's a lie. And like I told you, nobody wants to come out and tell Rishi a goddamn liar to her face. And that's strange for Aries women because y'all are not liars. You know why? Y'all are typically strong enough to say to somebody's face, yeah, I did it. So here we are in the mid-80s with a dude named Narada Michael Walden. He was Clive Davis's golden child at that time. Now, Clive was the one who hipped us to Narada, said Cecil. Clive has those ears for who's hot and who's not. He also had a feeling, and he was right, that Narada's attitude would work very well with Aretha. Because Narada is the type of person, you know, he ain't trying to cause no waves. Okay, this is my music. You work with it, okay? He knew how Aretha was. He heard of her reputation as being a whole, you know, be in the studios, okay? So he was ready with the mindset, let's uh, do this the easy way and not the hard way. Okay, that's how my spirit is. Let's do this the easy way. He wasn't as overbearing as Aretha said that Luther Vandross was. It didn't matter anyway because Luther Vandross wasn't fucking with her after that last album. Now, Narada says his relationship with Aretha Franklin began like this, okay? He was over there working with the Dionne Ward, right? Dionne Ward was tripping, okay? So he was like, I can't work with this bitch, Clive. You need to do something with her, okay? Clive said, don't worry about it. I got that lady right there, the Aretha. Work with her. Narada, he just was like, you know what? Riri, do you. I trust you. And that's exactly what she did for his song, Who's zooming who? Who's zooming who? He wanted Aretha to put the whole Aretha judge on the song. He knew that wouldn't do anything but make it better. So right. when they got back to the studio, a dude named Preston Glass had said, uh, remember that joint that you wrote with Jeffrey Cohen? I don't think you should put that on your album. I think you should give that to Aretha Franklin. Hence, the freeway of love. He sent it to her. She fell in love. She ready to record. Oh. oh, my God. She is with the bullshit again, all right? Oh, God. Poor Ruth Bowman. Poor Ruthie. Anyway, Ruthie got put in the trick bag again, okay? Aretha realizes that in order for her to maintain her popularity, she got to get out there on the road and, you know, to make money, all right? So she calls Ruth Bowman and says to Ruth Bowman, look, girl, I'm going to get on a plane, okay? I'm going to get on a plane. Ruthie, like, are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. In fact, I'm finna call Jet Magazine and tell Jet Magazine that I'm going to start getting on planes, okay? As a result, Ruth Bowman booked all these shows, okay? All these shows. I don't understand I mean, I guess it's a 50-50 chance that she will do it and she, or she won't do it. But anyway, she flaked out. Ruth Bowman at the airport with her telling her, you better get your motherfucking ass on this damn plane. I'm sick of your shit, Riri. I'm sick of your shit. Riri said to Ruth, you're being insensitive. I don't want to get on the plane. This is how her new dude, Dick Allen, came into play. When Ruth Bowman said, fuck her. But now she working with the dude, Dick Allen, who had a more easygoing attitude with her, okay? It was just business with him and her, okay? According to Ruth Bowman, that was family. Riri was family, and she was more emotional over Aretha Franklin's bad behavior because she looked at it as, that's my uh, little sister, or my daughter misbehaving. Get yourself together. The dude, Dick Allen, was like, okay, if she make it, she make it. If she don't, she don't. She's the one that's going to have to pay for it. So that was the difference between the two. For the next 27 years, Dick Allen booked the majority of Aretha's engagements. On several occasions, he was fired, just as Ruth Bowman was and everybody else in her camp. But he was the one who exhibited staying power. With her. So moving forward, Cecil said that Aretha likes to be on the cutting edge. It was Clive's idea to pair Riri with Annie Lennox. Clive is the king of duets. He liked to say that the heat from one artist can benefit the other. The Eurythmics 
you know, sweet dreams are made of this. Who am I to disagree? They was on fire. So that's when Annie Lennox and the dude from the Eurythmics came up with the song Sisters Are Doing It For Themselves. That's how Aretha and the two got together. So Aretha has done this extraordinary comeback, okay, because this never happens. Or it rarely, 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 rarely happens where somebody could have longevity like this in their career. Because Aretha's now like 40-something, okay? That never happened. You but know. it was Aretha's rebirth, okay? Now, who else was coming up during this time also was Miss Oprah Winfrey, and Miss Whitney Houston. Now, through his A&R staff, Clive Davis had heard about Whitney Houston, the daughter of Sister Houston. He saw her potential, signed her to Arista, and closely supervised her first album, okay? And from that first album, she had three hits. It would be uh, Saving All My Love, The Greatest Love at all, of All, and How Will I Know, okay? The album would eventually sell 25 million copies. Ten, but Whitney fondly remembers when Sissy Houston, Whitney Houston's mother, would go to the studio to work with Aretha Franklin. She was in awe. Riri okay. had a problem with Whitney Houston. You heard me? Riri did not like Whitney Houston. Don't Whitney got a pussy in between her legs? Don't she got a vagina? Didn't Aretha Franklin tell you husbands too long ago that she do not like fish she like women? She don't like them. So why would y'all think that she would like fucking Whitney Houston? I don't care how good the girl can say. She don't like her. Aretha okay. Franklin had a problem with Whitney Houston because in come Whitney. Okay, Aretha Franklin's like, Clive, you spending too much time over there with that goddamn Whitney Houston, all right? I know she is up and coming, but I'm now. Pay attention to me, bro. Pay attention to me. Aretha's sentiment was, I could have been way bigger, okay? My album could have did way more if you would have spent less time over there pushing that goddamn Whitney Houston and more time over here working with me. So, like I said, don't think that Aretha Franklin was fond of Whitney. Like I said, she got some fish between her legs, right? And we know we really don't like fish. Now, okay. moving on, Jerry Wexler. Jerry Wexler, we ain't forgot about you. She ain't over there at Atlantic no more, but neither is he. But we ain't forgot about you, baby. But anyway, Jerry Wexler said only someone like Clive with his uncanny understanding of the market, the marketing behind music could have realized how to sell her on a grander scale. Clive knew that he had to do more than just pick good producers for Riri. He had to turn her into a diva. The fuck you turn somebody into a diva and she already a diva. how that happen, Clive? Anyway, lovebugs, if you have not already done so, please remember to like, share, and subscribe because it is so important to our success here on the YouTube. And remember this, shout out to Moon Man Bako. Back home in the DMV. The same people that you meet on the way up will always be the same people that you meet on the way down. My naysayers, my patron loves you babies. You have a good one.